Hi, I'm Keith Baker, and today I'm going to talk about situated cognition and contextual details, really focusing on contextual details. This is quite a double-edged sword, as you'll see. This is part two of two talks. As usual, I have some caveats. I'll be simplifying some complicated studies. If you'd like more details, please see the references at the bottom of the slides. The first study is going to be involving students who are quite bright. These are science and engineering students. They've been chosen because they're very high SAT scores, and so we can consider them as representative of, of bright people, and we'll see how well they do with contextual details. Here is the study that they're involved with. They're going to be solving challenging problems. Matter of fact, they're so challenging, even these very bright students don't get very many of them correct. They will be then randomized to how their solutions appear. Some of the explanations that these students receive will have no illustrations whatsoever. They'll just be given a text explanation for the answer to these very difficult problems. However, some of the explanations will have what are called uninformative illustrations, meaning illustrations of things that do not help answer the question at all. They will do this for eight separate problems, where they will try the problem, probably fail at it, and then get the answer with or without uninformative illustrations. The next question they will be asked is how well do they think they understand the explanations? And you can see here, when they were given no illustration whatsoever, they thought they understood it pretty well. You can see here this is over 70%. So they had fairly high confidence that they understood the explanation. But importantly, I draw your attention to what happens here. When they are given uninformative illustration, in addition to the explanation of for how to solve the problem, they thought they understood the problem better. This is a distinct increase in their judgment of comprehension. I draw your attention to the fact that this increase in judgment of comprehension on the student's part is caused by this uninformative illustration. So I would say even smart students' judgments of comprehension can be misleading. Uh, remember there are eight of these items. They were given explanations for these difficult problems. Some had no illustration, some had the uninformative illustration shown here. And now we're going to give them new problems. These are going to be analogous, very difficult problems. And we're going to take a look at their performance. You can see here, the students who did not receive the uninformative illustration did distinctly better than the students who had uninformative illustrations. So somehow or other, this uninformative information interfered with their ability to understand the actual solutions to these problems. So the concept here is that superficial cues can lead to less learning. We'll talk about why that might be in the next slide. The gap between the judgment of comprehension and actual performance was distinctly higher for the group seeing the uninformative illustrations. Remember, they thought they knew more, but when they were actually tested, they knew less. That's the gap. And you can see here, it's quite a large gap. This next study is going to show another example of the damage of what are called seductive details. There's going to be a learning phase here. This is going to be about the formation of lightning. In one case, there's going to be text plus illustrations for how lightning is formed. And the students are going to be randomized to two different conditions. In one case, they'll have no seductive details. Seductive details are things like how many people die per year from lightning strikes which has nothing to do with how lightning is formed. It's just an interesting fact. The other group is going to get seductive detail. Then they're going to be tested at a later time. They're going to be tested for important ideas from what they learned, and then they're going to be asked to transfer to another related problem. So, the, so this here is really about information, and this is about applying their knowledge. You can see here, the group that did not have any seductive details did distinctly better shown here compared to here. So somehow or other, these seductive details are very much interfering with the learning of important ideas. In addition, when they try and transfer their information to another situation, again, you can see the students who did not receive the seductive details did distinctly better as compared to those who were subjected to unrelated but interesting or seductive details during the learning process. So how does this damage occur? What is the damage site of seductive details? And the concept here is what's called the diversion hypothesis. So this author, Harp, says that seductive details are damaging because readers activate prior knowledge related to the seductive detail, and readers build a coherent mental model around them and not around the structurally important ideas. Seductive details gets them to think about things that are not germane to the solution of the problem, and that's the concept of diversion. Seductive details do their damage by confusing the reader as to what the passage is about. 
because they, they activate inappropriate prior knowledge based on the seductive detail, not on the core understanding of the problem at hand. One way to get around this is through this process I've shown here, where we'll contextualize what you've learned, decontextualize it, and that's the critical part, and then recontextualize it for a new circumstance. So during the contextualization process, you go through and you discuss the actual mental representation of the solution, including the situation and the context. That's all real. So in discussing a situation, it's perfectly fine to discuss the context, the situation, and the details associated with what happened. The critical part is this next part here. This is when the principles are extracted without reference to the situation. This next part is when you take what you've learned and strip away the surface structure, you strip away the situation, the contextual details, and go for the underlying or what's called deep structure. Then, importantly, you have to recontextualize it. So take this information that is, that is called deep structure and adapt it and apply it to new situations with real life counterparts such as what if this situation, what if that context, so that you take the deep structure and you put it in a variety of new situations where you allow it to move between different situations with different contexts to see how that information is used effectively. This way here, you detach or uncouple the deep structure from context, which allows you to apply it much more effectively. Thanks very much for coming along on this short walk on the Expert Pathway.